recessions are the perfect time for content creators. When I left B2B sales for 10 years and I had to go start something new, I had no equity. Every time I would take a different job before that in those 10 years, I'd have to start from scratch. Here's your call list, here's your territory, go make some shit happen. The difference now, I just co-founded my second company with another business partner and it's a software company, a different company, but the difference is now I've got so much equity in the personal brand that we've already got investors lined up. We've already got customers lined up before we've even launched. So that's the power of, of building equity in yourself is that you always have it. And it doesn't matter what you're doing or where you're at or what your territory is or who your audience, you, you just always have that if you've built it when yourself. So that's my goal today, guys. I wanna create maybe a few different people in here, a handful of you, you all, that you have that light bulb moment that goes off and goes, all right, I need to get serious about this. I, I, people have been talking about content and video and LinkedIn and TikTok. This is the moment where I go. That's my goal for today. And if you think about just the time period that we're in, recession, the housing market, interest rates, everything that's going on, this is the perfect time for a content creator. Recessions are the perfect time for content creators. Because what happens during economic downturns, recessions, and pandemics, we saw the exact same thing that happened at COVID, people consume a lot more content, they're on social media more, right? Like they may not go out to dinner as much, they may hold off on buying the pool or remodeling or whatever it might be, but I guarantee you, they are still pulling out for a fact their, their smartphones and clicking on LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, right? So there's more actual demand for content and there's still not enough supply, meaning there's not enough content creators to fulfill that demand, which is why places like LinkedIn and TikTok have really great organic reach. Ads start being spent less. The reason that Instagram and Facebook lost a lot of their organic reach is because there was way too much supply and then there was a ton of ads. So when that, there's less ads, which is why you know you see Facebook, Meta, and all these companies are doing layoffs, because that business is hurt by that, right? The ad revenue. So when the ads become less and the demand becomes high and there's still not enough supply, that increases organic reach, which just means when you're posting without spending money on ads, it's gonna get seen by more people. So it's great, it's a, that's the positive or takeaway. This is the best time to do it. I built my brand from scratch on LinkedIn. I had, I had zero followers in 2019. I had a company, I had like a profile that I used for my other job in sales. And I think I had like 3,000 connections there over like a 10 year time period. And uh, I started with zero in 2019 on LinkedIn and had to build it from scratch during the pandemic. And I can tell you it was, a, it was a great time to do it because of that exact reason. The other thing that people want when they're going through a tough time or a recession is they wanna smile. They wanna laugh. They wanna consume content that makes them feel good. And that's part of what we can do as content creators. Okay, so what I'm gonna share with you two today, and then hopefully we've got some time to get into uh, Q&A, and I can stay past the time too, but I'd love to get into Q&A, because for me that's like the best part, and we can get a little bit more tactical and in the weeds with you guys with, with questions that you have. What I wanna show you today is a framework around content creation that I don't think you've probably been shown before. It's just what I've learned over the last three years, kind of putting things together, working with you know 100 plus clients on content, just learned a, a lot, I made mistakes obviously along the way, and had a lot of wins along the way, and I wanna pass down some of this to you guys today. So here's the framework around high-performing content. First of all, everyone thinks about what, do, what are we doing by creating content? Why are we creating content in the first place? Well, we've got our end goals and objectives and the things we want to accomplish from content, which is obviously we're trying to build a brand, we're trying to win like customers or partnerships, inbound leads, people that see our content, go to our profile, send us a DM or send us an email or book a call with us and say, hey, I've been seeing your content. I'd love to work with you. That happens all the time from putting out content. Those are all kind of end results, right? You get invited to speaking events, right? And uh, somebody had mentioned, I don't know if it was, oh, I think it was Steve, that mentioned uh, the event that I was at earlier this year, Breakthrough Event 2022 in, in Phoenix, Arizona that Chris Medina and Alec put on. Um, I was only invited to that because they had seen my content. Right, so it just, it creates a lot of opportunities for us in our business and then obviously that impacts our personal life too. So that's why we do it the end result and goal. But if we think about the purpose of your content, most people don't know the answer to that question. It's usually something like, I, you know, brand awareness, getting attention, getting known by people. And so what happens is people just end up putting out two types of content. One is ultra salesy content 
where it's like a, every every post is kind of like a mini sales pitch, especially on LinkedIn. Or maybe you'll have a couple lines and be like, call me now if you're looking to refine it. You know, it's like no one scrolls, no one logs on to social, no one logs on to social media to consume ads or to consume promotional stuff. Like none of you guys in here log on to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn and go, oh my gosh, I really hope I see like the best ads today. I hope I just get all this promotional stuff. Like it's just what I need. I just need to see this today, right? No one does that. You don't go on to, if you're on Hulu or if you're on Netflix or if you're just watching TV, you're watching a football game on Sunday or whatever it might be, no one's sitting around going, man, I can't wait. I know this, hey, that was a great pass, but I just like want the ads to come on. Like when are the ads gonna roll on? Because that's what I'm really here for. Maybe the Super Bowl outside of that, it's not the case, right? But yet we think that's what our consumers want for some reason. We think that they wanna see promotional stuff and they don't, right? So it needs to be value-driven type content that 100% serves that audience and either teaches them the why, the how, or it's relationship type building content. And that's what I'm gonna get into, okay? The other kind of content I see is just a little bit more of the random stuff. It's kind of like a post here, a post there. There's no real purpose or meaning behind it. And therefore it really doesn't drive the results that you want. So here's how you gotta look at it. The purpose of your content, three types of content that you need to be creating if you want it to actually build you a brand that converts to business opportunities and results. The first kind is that why content. So that's me talking about why does it make sense or why does it matter to you about the topics that I'm talking about in the first place? Because if I can't convince you of why it matters in the first place, everything else I talk about is not really going to matter, right? I could be like, oh, here's how you refinance a house. Here's how you remodel. Here's how you do this, this, this. But if I don't first explain, here's why you might want to remodel right now. Here's why you might want to refinance. Here's why you might want to look at this property or this property or whatever it might be, right? Here's why you want to check out these types of locations. Here's why you'd want to invest in this. If I don't explain the why behind it, all of the house stuff doesn't really fall into place because there's no push behind it. Okay. So, so that's your narrative or your story that you're bringing to the marketplace. You have a perspective, you have a point of view that you're basically taking and you're bringing to the marketplace. For example, mine would be that I think your video content should be a 24 seven sales rep for your business. I think people should get and build processes down where they can post video content every day where it doesn't take a ton of your time. That's kind of the, you know, because that builds obviously business opportunities, inbound leads, generates revenue for the company. That's the story I'm bringing to the marketplace and I'm talking about the why behind it, why it's so important to attract talent, to win customers, to do the things you want to accomplish. Content is it. You're a media company first, and then you've got the products and services. Like that's almost what it's becoming. Not that the product services don't matter or aren't important, they definitely are. But content has become such a big piece to running a business, and especially over the next five years, it's gonna make or break companies. And so I then after that, after I bring that story or that narrative to the marketplace, to my audience, now I have to teach them how to actually do this, right? And I wanna give away my secrets. I wanna share my strategies. I wanna share the things that I've learned, my perspectives. Because if I don't teach them how to do it, well, now they've got the story. They've got the point of view. I think Alex is onto something. He's talking about video content. And he said it should be your 24 seven sales rep. And he said it can change your life and do all this and make you a, a quadrillionaire, right? Like we talked about in the beginning, millions of followers. No. no, but if they start saying that and then they go try to make videos or they go try to do what you're, you're talking about why it's so important to do and they fail or it doesn't work, well, now it looks like you delivered the wrong story. Like, what, that, what happened to Alex? What happened to Brian? And Steve, you're telling me I should do this, and I did it, and it didn't work. It's like, because you didn't teach them how to do it. Okay, so the how content's really important. So breaking it down for people, this is how you think about this. This is the steps you would take to do X, Y, and Z, right? And either they're gonna try it on their own, and it's, they're gonna run through some rough patches, and then they're gonna call you, because you built the trust with them. Or they're gonna find some success with that on their own, and then they're more likely to refer somebody else to you when somebody's looking for your services. So either way, it's a win. All right, so the, the last kind of content, that's the why and the how content. And by the way, all of this runs in parallel. So it's not like you're doing, oh, I'm, for the next two weeks, I'm gonna do why content, and then I'm gonna do two weeks of the how content. It's not really how it works, right? Like if you watch my videos, go back and check out my content, you'll see it now. You'll see like, ah, I, I see what he, this is a why one. Oh, I got it. This is a how type content because he's showing me the steps I would take to do this and this, right? And so all of them run in parallel, 
okay? So the third kind is the relationship building content. This is where we have to get past, like I'm gonna educate, I'm gonna educate, I'm gonna educate, and we've gotta be a human being, right? So this is a great place to do edutainment. It's a great place to share personal journey stories. It's a great place to share customer success stories and how you impacted a family by finding them the right deal for the home or whatever it might be. Like the things that you guys do, and I know this company well, like there's a lot of impacts that get made inside of this company and outside of it. I know that for a fact. So like, where are those stories? You know, so those are the things that are gonna get people bought into you as a person, as a human being, and that's gonna build the trust. And you've already got the credibility because you've put out the why and the how content. And now people just wanna build a relationship with you through your content. They feel like they get to know you through your content. And that when you bring all that together, that's how content converts to business opportunities. You're with the relationship building content, you're creating champions and fans and advocates and people that are like, I would stand behind this person. I feel connected to this person. Okay, now what you wanna share there is up to you. For example, I don't share pictures of my kids and videos with my kids and that kind of stuff. Some people do and that's totally fine. I don't talk a lot about my deep, dark secrets and stuff like that. Some people do. But you've got to showcase some kind of human emotional side to you because we're, we're humans. There's everyone that's consuming your content is a person. And people are like the algorithm, like, oh, my, the algorithm's got my content. It's not performing. I'm like, the algorithm is people. It's, it's literally just how people are reacting to your content. The algorithm reads that data and then distributes your content out based on how the audience is reacting. If they're liking it or commenting or engaging with it, that's more so on LinkedIn because it's a social graph. If it's watch time, retention rate on your videos on TikTok because it's more of an interest-based graph, now that algorithm has some data and it's gonna do something with it. It's either gonna kick it out to more people if it performed well and people watched it, consumed it, liked it, that kind of stuff, or it's gonna drop it because that algorithm has one goal, which is to keep people on the platform. How do you keep people on a platform? You show them good content. What's good content? You gotta test it, let the audience consume it, and they'll tell you if it's good content. So the algorithm is nothing more than just people paying attention to what you're doing or, or reading your content and then distributing it out. Now, where this comes into play, like I said earlier, is the supply and demand and the amount of ads. That greatly impacts the distribution model that an individual platform has.